welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash and welcome to The Hair Loss Show, episode number 37. Uh, once again, uh, Dr. Rod Russell Knudsen is not going to be joining us on this episode because of everything that's happening with COVID-19. Um, we're doing self-isolation. So he's based in Sydney. So uh, it's just me today on this episode. Hope everyone is keeping well. Thanks again for um, all the support on the channel. Hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, please remember to uh, subscribe uh, if you've got any questions. Uh, leave them on the channel we'll try and get to those if you've got any suggestions for future videos again please leave those uh, on the channel as well so today's episode is um, a response to a question uh, we had this question quite a few times coming through the through the channel uh, but I thought I'd address it directly I, I kind of addressed it indirectly on a previous episode but I thought I'd unpack a little bit more and that is is it worthwhile measuring DHT levels if you're losing hair and about to start therapy. So what does that mean? So if we go through the basics again and we look at male pattern hair loss or androgenic alopecia, it is a result of uh, genetics and also a hormonal change, which is uh, from a change from testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. And if you've got a lot of DHT in the system, then uh, what it what results in is a miniaturization of the hair over a variety over over a number of hair cycles uh, at which point the hair will shed and fall out and not grow back so this is the problem here and what we do with therapy for example finasteride is we block the 5 alpha reduct reductase enzyme that causes that conversion. So if we block that enzyme, we lower that in the, the system. So the question that's been asked is, well, should we measure that so we know where we're starting and therefore we can start therapy with finasteride and then measure it again and see what the reduction in DHT level actually is. And then we'll know how effective um, our therapy is. And on that principle, it seems like a very valid question and actually a very smart thing to do. The reality is we don't measure DHT levels. And the reason is, is that you have to look at the body as compartments and what the level of, of DHT in one compartment is not necessarily re reflective of what it is in, in another compartment. So one compartment, for example, would be the bloodstream. So, and if you measure a, a blood test for DHT, you are measuring the level of DHT in the bloodstream. The reality is, is that male pattern hair loss, it doesn't matter what the level of DHT in the blood actually is. It really only matters what the level of DHT at the hair follicle in this part of the scalp is. And we really can't, we haven't got a very good assay right now to measure that level. So uh, we don't effectively do a blood test to monitor systemic levels because it's not a real reflection of what the level at the scalp is. And, and the other thing, the other point that I'll mention, and I went through it again in a previous episode on uh, testosterone and, and looking at the steroid hormone pathway uh, as well, but the reality is we're not trying to bring the DHT levels down to zero. We don't want that. DHT is important for all of us. And we just, we're just trying to lower the level below a threshold level at the level of the hair follicle that it will stop that miniaturization process from happening. So I hope that answers the question. We don't measure DHT levels, uh, but uh, feel free to, to bring, keep the questions coming. I hope you enjoy the content. Uh, stay safe again, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks very much.